Hi fellow chicken enthusiasts, we're Say Why Chicken Thigh, and I'm here with one of our silky cross chicks from our last hatch to share with you 100 tips for backyard chicken owners in honor of our 100th video here on our channel. These tips are categorized into four main sections. Tips for the chicken speed, tips for the coop and for the free ranging species, tips to become a knowledgeable and a resourceful chicken owner, and tips that are specific for your chicken's eggs. Now, I'm not a vet. I'm just a chicken lady who's had the pleasure of having seven years of experience owning backyard chickens, sharing with you my opinions and my advice of what worked best for me on our hobby farm. I do encourage you to do your own research before implementing any of these tips to make sure that your flock and you are living your best life. I hope that you enjoy 100 Tips for Backyard Chicken Owners. Clean water is obviously essential to have available at all times to maintain a healthy flock. So our number one tip is to change and clean the waterers often. If you live in a cold climate, invest in heated waterers. By trying to avoid the cost of buying heated waterers, we've spent more money and time replacing and refilling cheap plastic waterers that have frozen and cracked. Add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to the waterer to reduce algae buildup and also to provide beneficial nutrients. Find an affordable, high quality feed that is ideal for you and your chickens. There are many choices and types, such as organic, non-GMO, medicated, unmedicated, pellets, crumbles, the list goes on. Research which type will best fit your needs. Try to only offer as much feed to your chickens as they will eat in a day and use feeders that prevent waste. Next to the investments to your coop, your feed costs will be the next highest cost of your backyard flock. And so try to reduce food waste as much as you can. Fermented feed will significantly reduce your feed costs and offer health benefits too. So learn how to make it by watching our video, How to Make Fermented Chicken Feed. To boost egg production in winter months, supplement your chicken feed. Add health-boosting probiotics by adding yogurt to their diet. Also try supplementing feed with oats and seeds, especially during cold weather. Offer protein-rich mealworms, especially in the winter time, or when chickens are foraging less. Add beneficial dried or fresh herbs to your chicken's feed year-round. There are many herbs you can consider offering. And you can mix all these supplemental goodies up to make your own nutritious homemade chicken cookie treat to treat your flock anytime. Watch our video, How to Make Chicken Treats. But going back to the tips about herbs for a moment, you can create a chicken-friendly herb garden for your flock to scratch through. You can even encourage your flock to patrol for pests in your veggie gardens. But in the same token, to be mindful to fence off any plants or vegetation, you don't want to risk getting completely ravaged by your chickens. You might even consider growing your own grains or seeds for your flock. Chickens will happily control the tick population on your property, and so allow them to free range in grassy and wooded areas if you can. And if you have an overgrown area that you'd like cleared, chickens are efficient, at dethatching vegetation. Supplementing your chicken's diet isn't limited to free ranging. Get into the practice of saving chicken scraps for your flock. Be mindful to avoid any food scraps that might be toxic or unsavory for your chickens and feel confident in its safety before offering it to your birds. Oh, and chickens actually eat rodents sometimes, so avoid using rodenticide or pest controls to prevent accidental poisoning of your flock or any wildlife. Discourage pests such as rats and mice from invading your coop by feeding chickens outside the coop whenever you're able to. And if you must keep your feed in the coop, be sure it is as far away from roosting and nesting areas as possible to help keep it sanitary. Build a chicken accessible compost bin, preferably in a different location than the coop. Your chickens can pick through the compost pile while contributing nitrogen. Use compostable litters and coop linings to contribute nitrogen-rich deposits to your compost piles. And while we're on that topic, we can mention tips for a clean and functional coop and living spaces for your chickens. 
consider building your own coop to make one that's perfect for you and your flock. Whether you purchase or you build your coop, choose a model that prioritizes security and easy cleaning over the cosmetics. Consider any physical restrictions you might have and be mindful to choose a model that is easy to move around in and clean out. Plan to have spaces designed to meet all the needs of your flock at their varying stages of life. It's helpful to have a way to partition your coop if needed. The coop is where your chickens will sleep, lay eggs, and seek shelter in bad weather. Use wide roosts so your chickens' toes are flat to avoid frostbite in a cold coop. Consider the spaces within the coop to make roosting and nesting options that will fit your flock's needs, such as lower nesting boxes for the silky bantams or the 10-foot roosting bars for the roosters. Provide multiple nesting box options for multiple hens, but chances are they're going to use one box anyway. Invest in properly insulating and ventilating your coop year-round. In very cold climates, add insulation to the inside and outside walls of the coop. Reduce the risk of fire by using heat plates and panels as opposed to heat lamps. Try the deep litter method to trap more heat in the coop. Consider how predators might enter the coop wall to wall and floor to roof to reduce predator loss. Make sure the coop floor is burgo proof and rot proof. Seal off any holes, gaps, or cracks, no matter how small. For example, a weasel can squeeze into a crack just the size of a quarter. If you do find holes burrowed in or around your coop, stuff the holes with aluminum foil and expanding foam insulation before packing them tightly with soil. Also, be sure to dig around the coop and tuck hardware cloth around the perimeter and up the walls to create an extra barrier. But in the same token to the last tip, chickens should have access to a space to take dust baths. Straw and shavings will suit their needs, but they'll be most happy if they can access real dirt. Dust baths will help rid them of mites and fleas, but both of these things are not contagious or harmful at all to humans. The chickens will quickly pit out areas of your yard taking dust baths. Encourage rearranging in new areas to allow the old spaces to be filled in and regrown. If you have a threat from aerial predators that makes free-ranging risky, consider using a chicken tunnel or tractor to safely expand their outdoor spaces. Learn how to make a secure and affordable chicken tractor by watching our video, $200 Do-It-Yourself Chicken Tractor. If you have dogs, after giving them a good brushing, scatter the fur in spaces your chickens frequent. The scent might help deter some predators and pests. Encourage your dogs to pee near the chicken coop to contribute deterrent smells to the area. Also consider contributing your own deterrent scent. Hey, you know, we don't judge on our channel and it's always best to do what you can to keep predators at bay. And while we're on the topic, always practice good hygiene whenever caring for your chickens. You can make a simple hand washing station near the coop to avoid the spread of germs, especially if you have young children that are helping you out. It's also helpful to have a pair of boots dedicated for your chicken chores. Contaminants can live in soil. Keeping germy boots from tracking onto other surfaces is a step in the direction of cleanliness. And while it's important to be vigilant against the spread of illness, your chickens are much more at risk of predator attack, to be honest. Be physically prepared to deal with predators and any harm they might cause to the coop or your flock. Have extra chicken fencing, expandable foam insulation, and other building materials on hand to make quick repairs to the coop as needed. If a predator strikes the coop, it is likely to return. It's helpful to have a variety of animal traps available to stop a predator from stalking out your chickens a second time. Be emotionally prepared to accept that even with the best care and protection, your birds can get sick or injured. Always have an alternative space available to serve as a chicken infirmary. And this segues nicely into our next category of tips to try to become a knowledgeable and resourceful chicken keeper. Keep basic first aid remedies on hand, organized, and in an easy to access location. We're most often reaching for the chicken safe antibacterial spray. Also have wrappings like sterile gauze and vet wrap handy at all times. 
Powdered electrolytes are great to have on hand whether you're planning on hatching new chicks or if you just happen to have a sick chicken that needs a little bit more help. Get to know your community resources. For example, find out if any local lumber mills offer scrap or shavings for free. Also, join an online backyard chicken forum or an online group to get connected with like-minded people. Because some of the best advice I've learned about chicken care came from online posts by knowledgeable hobby farmers. Even though some people will try to convince you that owning backyard chickens is ridiculously cheap, the truth is that your actual costs will vary. It's helpful to know resourceful ways to save money on their care. Try to find free or very inexpensive repurposed building materials or retired farm equipment on places like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, online groups, free cycle, and community mailings like Front Porch Forum. Chicken math is a real thing. You'll probably end up owning more chickens than you originally thought you would. Don't fight it. There are so many varieties, not only in colors, feathering, and sizes of the various chicken breeds, but also of their intended purposes. So choose the breeds that you have in your backyard, not only for their appearance, but also to find a breed that can be comfortable in your climate and to suit your family's needs. Raising multi-purpose breeds of chickens has allowed us to contribute to hatching hens for our flock, while the extra roosters have provided meat for our freezer. So consider the intended uses of your backyard chickens and choose breeds accordingly. Be knowledgeable about the characteristics of a certain breed chick you're hoping to acquire to make sure you're getting the type of chicken you expect. Mix-ups happen, even at large supply stores. You can watch our video, Crossbreed and Barnyard Mixed Chicken ID, to see examples of common barnyard chicken breeds and mixes. Be knowledgeable of the characteristics of hens and roosters and ways to determine the gender of specific chick breeds, since large farm supplier chains notoriously have roosters misplaced in bins labels as hens. You can buff up your skills by watching our video, Hen or Roo, What Say You, to practice determining what does a pullet and a cockerel really look like? Consider hatching your own chicks, not only to be very knowledgeable about your new flock, but also to reduce the spread of disease and illness from one flock to another. Respectfully, I caution you to be choosy about who you get your chickens from and insist that the hatchery or the fellow backyard chicken owner is an ethical and hygienic person as you see fit. And if you do get more chickens, quarantine any new birds before introducing them to your flock to eliminate the possible spread of illness. When adding or reintroducing chickens to your flock, do so at night after the birds have been roosting. This will help reduce aggression. Be vigilant to watch for signs of bullying anytime the flock dynamic is changed. Pecking order is a natural way to establish dominance, but it can get violent. So, learn how to spot a pecking order challenge by watching our video, Seven Week Old Chickens Are Full of Teenage Angst, to see examples of some healthy challenges with pecking order. Handle chicks frequently to encourage friendly behavior. Handle your adult chickens often as well. Not only will this make your chickens friendly, but it will also help you spot any changes in their appearance or their behavior more quickly. Isolate an injured or sick chicken immediately. You can learn more about how to care for an injured chicken in our video, A Lucky Hen's Positive Journey to Recovery. Have a plan for what to do if a chicken becomes seriously ill or injured. In our experience, we found that a few veterinarians who treated chickens were really far away from us and their services came at a high cost. So after using a vet service one time to help a chicken, we decided to learn how to become comfortable humanely dispatching a severely injured or ill chicken at home. It was the hardest yet the most useful skill we've had to learn. You can't have the chickens without the eggs, so to end our collection of tips, we're going to mention some tips related to chicken eggs. Different breeds of chickens lay different colored eggs at different rates. If you're raising hens for eggs, consider the frequency and the types of eggs you're aiming to get out of your flock. To learn more about two popular layer types, watch our video comparing our prolific layers of the Issa Brown and the Partridge Cochin. 
And to see examples of colorful rainbow eggs, watch our video about Della the Easter Egger. Be aware that a hen's laying rate will naturally fluctuate for a variety of reasons, including molting, brooding, reduced daylight hours, and even more. It's normal for your chickens to lay less eggs in the winter, so you can choose to turn on lights in the coop to increase the egg production when there's less than 12 hours of daylight. Also try keeping your rooster to hen ratio to about a dozen hens for each rooster if you're not seeing a lot of eggs, as too many roosters can stress out your hens and reduce their egg production. You might consider not having roosters at all if you're not interested in having fertilized eggs. Your chickens are going to lay eggs regardless. Aim to keep good roosters and remove the bad ones. Keep the roosters who are gentle with the hens, who do the rooster dance, and who find food for their girls. I've come across lots of advice about how to tame a mean rooster, but my advice is to just get rid of the aggressive roosters to avoid any injury to hens or pets or people, especially if you have young children. Use real eggs, dummy eggs, or even golf balls in the nesting box to encourage your hens to lay. If you're getting eggs but the eggshells are breaking easily or are bumpy or oddly shaped, the chickens might not be getting enough calcium. You could affordably add calcium to your hen's diet by supplementing with their own crushed eggshells. We're currently in the process of making a video about that right now. If you're perplexed by a sudden lack of eggs, seek around every place the chickens go to see if they're stashing their eggs in a hidden clutch. So long as they are unwashed, unrefrigerated eggs are safe to eat for a month. Collect eggs daily, especially in freezing weather. This will help keep the eggs cleaner and will also prevent the eggs from freezing and splitting. In sub-zero weather, collect the eggs twice a day. If you have any eggs that you suspect might be bad, you can try performing the float test. Essentially, you just submerge an egg into a tall glass of water. And if the egg floats at all, it might be bad. It's best not to eat it. Find some favorite go-to recipes to use up fresh eggs when they are abundant, such as these homemade butter herb dumplings that are featured in this tomato chicken stew recipe. Experiment with different methods of preserving eggs to find out what is most useful for you and your family. If you're planning on incubating your chicken eggs, collect the eggs daily and set them within 10 days. And I have so many more tips related to hatching chicken eggs. And so for more advice about storing and setting your fertile eggs, check out our other video, How to Hatch Chicken Eggs. Well, thanks for sticking around and making it to the 100th tip for backyard chicken owners on our 100th video on our channel. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and I hope that it provided some inspiration for you and your backyard flock. The tip, of course, is to subscribe to Say Why Chicken Die. It's been seven months since we started this YouTube channel, seven years since we started with our first flock. I can't wait to see what the future with chickens holds for us, and I hope that you stick around for the journey with us.